All right, Dave, we're in hot Atlanta, but it's not so hot. But is it hot because we're at Supercompute 2024 and we're trying to figure out how to liquid cool, air cool, cool, all the great things, Sergi, you and your team are doing at Barcelona Supercompute. Scott from Lenovo ISG VP, welcome to 6.5 on the road. Good to be here with you guys. Thank you. All right. So, Sergio, let's start out with you. What is Barcelona Supercomputing? So, Barcelona Supercomputing Center is a national facility for Spain. We aggregate more than 1,100 employees, researchers that are trying to get the solutions for society on science and, and industry. So, we have strong cooperations with the industry, but one of the highlighted ones is the one for Lenovo. They are financing our research that we are commonly investing in research in personalized medicine, in climate change, in processor design, in power savings on energy consumption of the systems. So we are one of the reference worldwide of supercomputing on research and services. Is this, is this a government private sector collaboration or funding wise? In, in our case, we are a public institution composed by the Spanish Ministry of Science and Innovations, the okay. Catalan Ministry of Science and Innovations and the Technical University of Catalonia. We are publicly funded. So all our funds, except that those coming from industry that want to cooperate with us are public money. So okay. that's the reason we have, we are driven by the interests of society. So, so, so from a Spanish perspective, sort of federal and state, if you will, Funding, yes? Yes. Yeah, okay. So we have these strong corporations yeah. in Barcelona Supercomputing Center. You may have heard about the news of Spain and Catalonia discussion some years ago, but no, we have a strong cooperation in science for BSC for more than 20 years. So Scott, talk to us about this special relationship you have with Barcelona Supercomputing Center. Yeah, so it's been a long relationship. I've known this guy for a very, very long time. We've installed several computers there, including the new one, the newest one that just went in this year. Um, the reason we love working with Barcelona is they do amazing things with the compute, but their researchers are working on all kinds of fields that make lives better for everybody. So it's, it's a, that's what drives our team to, to want to put the systems in there. Um, the funding that he talked about, the, the research funding, it's helping us look at all different kinds of things from medicine to how we, how we take things to market and improve local economy. So really exciting to be a part of that. So Sergio, talk to me about some of the users on this system. What are they doing? Uh, users, we are covering all, all areas of science, from in artificial intelligence to medicine to biology to chemistry to astrophysics, cancer, drugs, dissipations, automotive, wind energy, anything we are covering. So our access, as you mentioned, is public access. So they are competing to get access to the systems. They get access for free and they are running for a year, for two years on the systems, on the most powerful computing facilities to get the results. So there's a, there's a famous saying from the part of Spain that uh, Sergi is from, um, todo bajo el sol, everything under the sun. <laughs> How do you keep these things cool in the supercomputing <laughs> like like data center. center. You like that? That was yeah. a good one, man. That yeah. was a good one. Yeah, wow. how, how, good but, one. but seriously, how do you, how yeah. do you, what are you doing at Lenovo to make sure that, that the, the amazing systems that are running here that are essentially transmogrifying electricity into heat. Yeah. How do you do That's to exactly what they're that? doing? So, you know, the systems are, they're power intensive, but the amount of work they turn out is truly amazing. Like head and shoulders better than what we had just a few years ago on a performance per watt or however you want to measure it, but it is still a lot of energy. So one of the big consumers of energy in a typical data center is the air conditioning. We've got to keep these systems cool as they run, they give off heat. Um, doing that with traditional air movement and things like that is very, very costly. It's also kind of bad for the planet because of all the power it uses. We've turned to liquid cooling. Uh, our Neptune systems use warm water cooling, actually. So we don't have to chill the water that goes into the systems. It's going in warm. In fact, it uh, could be up to 45 degrees Celsius, uh, which means I'm never chilling that water. Um, I don't need any fans. I don't need traditional air conditioning. So we're driving the power consumption down used by the data center dramatically versus an air-cooled system. So your PUE is running at 1.06. 1.06, which is industry. I mean, that's that's where the industry needs to be to effectively run this gear and be efficient. So a lot of this has been driven by accelerated compute. You know, we're moving away from CPU focused compute to accelerated compute. How has this transition impacted DCC? 
So what we are having is, we are serving all the scientific community. So we want to have systems for all the workloads, for all the different applications. So we are having a, a real compensated system, including accelerated partitions and general purpose partition that is driving the capacity to perform the analysis of ancillary codes that are necessary because not everything can be solved today in, in accelerated computing systems. And where are you seeing workloads kind of balance out? Where are the workloads that are CPU driven versus the ones that are accelerated compute driven? Uh, it really depends on the domain. So for example, for climate change, the, the codes for doing the analysis on, on the weather predictions, on the transformation, on the movement of the air, also for the fluid dynamics on the, on the airplanes. There are many codes that has been there for many years. And, and especially those codes are approved by, by industry for certifications, and that those are not adequate for, for the yeah, accelerators. Are, accelerators are kind of dominating the top 500 when we look at it, that's you know, the news makers, but a lot of science is still being done on, on general CPU computing. Still a lot of research is being done on that. So you, you mentioned earlier that your users compete for uh, resources and the ability to run workloads. What is that process? No, they, they, we have an open call. The call is, is closed in specific deadlines. And then we have a committee external to us, which is analyzing all the proposals. So we have an oversubscription three to one. Only two, one is getting in, two are dis discarded. So we get the best research across Europe and, and Spain. In, in North America in particular, there's a lot of discussion about power grids, availability of electricity moving forward, the insatiable appetite for electricity that AI represents. Um, are you facing similar constraints in Europe? So those systems are very power consumption, consumption, but we need the systems. So we need to move science forward for, the, for solving the climate change, for solving the personalized medicines, for solving the smart city problems, for solving anything this is required. So we don't know other means to solve this problem. So we need to have limitations and restrictions on, on using properly any bot but we have to make sure that those are available to scientists and, and industry. Yeah, yeah. These, these AI systems and the HPC systems that we've been investing in, they're doing amazing work. So short term, yes, they consume power. Long term, the benefits for the planet, for better health, better health care, more efficient buildings, more efficient cars is going to outweigh the power consumption we're doing in the systems right now today. That's kind of, that's, that's the exciting part of what we're working on. Yeah, there's, there's an interesting map here where people who come in are asked, to put a decal of like where they're from and where they, but, and where they're working, and you see the truly global nature of this conference. This, although it's here in North America, it's been here in North America for a long time. Um, I know that Lenovo has a global reach, yeah. just like the conference does. Uh, tell us about how you know how that kind of changes things from a European perspective in terms of where the systems are manufactured. Oh, you, have yeah. tell, you have facilities in Hungary. What's what's the story? Yeah, so we are we are a multinational company. We we do business. We're fairly fortunate. We're big in the east. We're big in the west. Big in Europe. In fact, Europe is our largest single region. Um, wherever we compete, wherever we're doing business, we want to be as local as we possibly can. And part of being local is manufacturing the systems close to our our, our customers. So we do. We manufacture since 2022. We've been manufacturing in in Hungary. Uh, we've shipped over a million servers. Uh, that supports over a thousand different customers. Um, but it's, it's nice to be able to do it. You visited for the build, so pretty short flight from Barcelona into Hungary. So you was able to be there for the build out of those first racks. But it also means things like less shipping. So we're, let, you know, we're being less, uh, less impacting on the environment for all the shipment and the freight we're doing from Hungary to Barcelona. So talk to me about lessons learned for Lenovo as you service this huge uh, use case, how has this helped you with down market, even up market solutions? Well, the best thing we can do is listen to him. Just, <laughs> I mean, we listen to him and we're always in good shape. Um, but you know, what, what we've tried to do our very best to, to do is design systems that can be used at the highest end of supercomputing, like at BSC, but those same exact systems can be used by any university, any, co any corporate environment with, with very little effort. So very small increments, you don't need to have huge budgets. We're fortunate BSC has a very large budget. They buy lots of systems. In this case, what do we have? 6,400 Gen 4 Xeons in there. So really, really massive system. That same system can be bought by any user in an increment of one or two nodes. So that, that's a big part of what we're trying to do. Bring exascale power to every scale, to every customer. So we haven't talked numbers. 
And this is super computer. While this system may not be in the top 500, what are the numbers around this system? Like, how big is it? It the, is the in system. the top 500. It's in the top 500. Yeah, okay, it is. So the, the, there you go. Yeah. I'm corrected. How big is the system? The system, what big is relative to it. Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> it is using a total of 90 racks. It is placed in a location with 1,000 square meters. The importance is not the size, but the density. Mm -hmm. So we have racks, those racks are using 60 to 70 megawatts each. So all the racks are connected with an in a networking, NDR200, that allows to cooperate because supercomputing is cooperation. You want to perform one part of the problem, his uh, other one, and you want to all the 6,400 cooperating together. So you need a fast networking. So this is part of the, of the VIX file system. So this is the largest system of this technology worldwide. Yeah. All right? There's no other this size. Yeah. When you talk about non-accelerated compute, which again, still supports a huge amount of research, the system hosted at Barcelona is the largest non-accelerated computer in the world. Is that all water-cooled at this point, or is it a mix? In, in, in your particular case, is, are all of these systems water-cooled, or is yeah. there a mix of water-cooled, air-cooled? Or? All the system, except some small components, for example, the networking, right. is based on DLC. And, okay. and this yeah. was a requirement for us for the installation. Yeah. So we said the, the RFP, the tender documents, we required that the system is at the minimum 85% DLC, system water-cooling. Otherwise, we cannot afford to do air cooling because it's too expensive. Yeah. Now, with with the with the warm water coming in, relatively, it's all relative, right? Yeah. It's like large, biggest it's relative. Warm. Forty-five is very warm. It's hot. And, yeah. and so you kind of you have a temperature gradient of what? Ten, 10 degrees C in and out. Yeah. Is that still enough of a gradient to start considering um, recapturing that energy, recycling that energy at some point in the future, yeah. or is that gradient not enough to worry about? What? Do you start, yeah. yeah. In, in the short distance, you can reduce. So we are in the building of for 500 people. Yeah. On that building, we need to build, uh, we need to have hot water at 45. Okay. So we can reduce it. Easy. Okay. Direct. For the amount, for the capacity, may not. For long distribution, you need to higher the temperature of the water. But that's still doable. And we are doing this in Europe many places. Yeah, the concept that, you know, the heat in a data, the heat in the data center is waste. We really want to combat that. We want to turn it into something that we can recycle. It is energy. It's, right. As you said, it's been converted from electrical energy to heat energy, right. but it's valuable to us, and we want to find a way to recycle it. Starting to do that, the, the first thing is start hot, make it even hotter, and that's what we do with Neptune. No. Yeah. Well, we really want to thank you, too, for stopping by, sharing your story. It is always amazing to see the work being done at the highest levels because it does work its way down into whether we're talking about data centers, smaller research facilities, as you mentioned, Scott, all the way down to two nodes. Supercompute HPC does amazing things. And this balance between kind of the energy costs and the benefits for society, we'll be having this conversation all week here in Atlanta, Supercompute 2024. For me, Keith Townsend, about co-hosts, Dave, we'd like to thank you and continue to please watch our coverage here from Supercompute 2024.